Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving headfirst into a question that's plagued humanity since the dawn of time. Do we actually control our own choices, or is our fate predetermined? This age, old debate between free will and determinism has some fascinating roots in ancient philosophy. Understanding these perspectives can shed light on how we make decisions and live our lives. Welcome to the Abyss of Wisdom. Section 1. Unveiling the Mysteries. Free Will versus Determinism. The human experience is a fascinating paradox. We feel a sense of agency in our choices, yet external forces constantly influence us. This tension lies at the heart of the free will versus determinism debate, a philosophical tug of war that's been around for centuries. Let's unpack these complex concepts. Free will, the power of choice. Imagine standing at a crossroads. You can choose the scenic route or the faster highway. Free will suggests you have the uncoerced ability to make this decision. You weigh the pros and cons, consider your preferences, and ultimately pick the path that aligns with your desires. This subjective experience of making conscious choices is a cornerstone of the free will argument, determinism. A chain reaction of causes. On the other side of the spectrum lies determinism. This perspective suggests that everything that happens, including our choices, is predetermined. Every event is a result of a chain of prior causes stretching back to the beginning of the universe. Our genes, upbringing, social environment, and even random chance events would all contribute to shaping our decisions, leaving no room for genuine free will. Why does this matter? This debate isn't just an intellectual exercise. It has profound implications for how we view ourselves and the world around us. Here's why understanding these concepts is crucial. Morale responsibility. If we have free will, we're truly accountable for our actions. This forms the basis for our legal systems and our sense of right and wrong, meaning and purpose. The ability to make choices contributes to a feeling of purpose in life. Without free will, life might feel predetermined and devoid of agency. The nature versus nurture debate. Determinism highlights the influence of external factors on our behavior, while free will emphasizes individual decision making. Understanding both sides helps us navigate this complex interplay the spectrum of choice. The reality might not be a clear-cut binary. Perhaps there is a spectrum at play. We might have some degree of free will within a larger deterministic framework. Our genes and environment set boundaries, but within those boundaries, we might have the ability to make choices and shape our lives. The takeaway, free will and determinism offer contrasting lenses through which to view the human experience. By understanding these concepts, we can engage in richer discussions about morality, responsibility, and the very nature of choice itself. This exploration sets the stage for a deeper dive into the fascinating perspectives offered by ancient philosophy on this timeless question. Section two, a journey through time. Philosophical perspectives on free will. The free will debate stretches back centuries, with each era offering unique insights. Let's embark on a historical journey to meet some key philosophers who grappled with this question. The seeds are sown. Ancient Greece, Socrates, 470 to 399 BCE. The father of Western philosophy, Socrates didn't provide a definitive answer on free will. However, his emphasis on self-knowledge and reasoned inquiry laid the groundwork for future discussion. He believed in the power of critical thinking to guide moral choices, hinting at a form of free will. 
informed by reason. Plato, 428 to 348 BCE. Plato, Socrates' student, introduced the concept of the soul existing before the body. This could be seen as a challenge to free will, suggesting our choices might reflect a pre-existing essence. However, Plato also emphasized the importance of reason and education in shaping our decisions. Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE. Aristotle took a more moderate approach. He acknowledged the influence of external factors on our choices, but also believed in the power of reason to guide our actions towards virtuous behavior. This implies a form of free will, operating within the constraints of our nature and circumstances. Stoicism and the art of acceptance, 300 BC onwards. This influential school of philosophy emerged around 300 BC, offering a unique perspective on free will and determinism. Stoics, like Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, believed in Amor Fati, love of fate. Accepting things beyond our control, including the possibility of predetermined events, focus on virtue, developing a strong character and acting ethically, regardless of external circumstances. Reason as a guide. Using reason to navigate challenges and make the best choices within the constraints of what's predetermined. While determinism might have dictated the broader strokes of life, Stoicism emphasized the power of reason and virtue in shaping our responses within that framework. This approach offered a sense of peace and control, even in the face of an unpredictable world. The debate continues. The exploration of free will continues beyond the ancient world. Philosophers and scientists throughout history have added their voices to this ongoing conversation, enriching our understanding of this complex issue. In the next section, we'll delve deeper into the role of rationality in navigating the free will debate. Section three, rationality and the dance between free will and determinism. In the ancient world, the debate on free will wasn't a binary choice between complete control or complete predetermination. Philosophers like those we encountered grappled with the role of rationality in navigating this complex space. Here's how they saw it. Reason as a guiding light. Think of reason as a lamp in a dark room. It may not illuminate the entire space, the ultimate cause of events, but it allows us to see the immediate surroundings, our choices and actions. More clearly, by applying logic and critical thinking, we can weigh options, assess consequences, and make informed decisions. Free will as informed choice. These ancient thinkers believed in a degree of free will, but not a random or impulsive one. This free will stemmed from our ability to reason and choose based on what we perceive as best. Imagine being presented with two paths, a safe, well-lit one and a dark, overgrown one. Reason would guide us towards the safer option, exercising a form of free will within the constraints of the presented choices. Ethics and decision-making. The connection between reason, free will, and ethics was paramount. By using reason to understand the potential consequences of our choices, we could make decisions that aligned with our moral compass. This focus on ethical decision making became a cornerstone of many ancient philosophical schools, the limits of reason. However, they also acknowledged the limitations of reason. Emotions, biases, and incomplete information could cloud judgment. Imagine encountering a beautiful flower on that dark path. Our emotions might tempt us to stray from the safe route, highlighting the potential for reason to be swayed. The takeaway, while determinism might dictate the broad strokes of our lives, reason offered a way to navigate within those parameters. By using logic and critical thinking, 
Ancient philosophers believed we could exercise a form of free will, making informed choices that aligned with virtue and ethics. This interplay between reason, free will, and determinism remains a fascinating topic even today. Section 4. Case Study. Stoicism's Footprint in the Modern World. Stoicism's influence stretches far beyond the pages of ancient texts. Its core principles resonate with modern audiences seeking to navigate a complex and often overwhelming world. Here's how Stoicism's ideas have permeated modern thought and everyday life, self-improvement culture. The Stoic, emphasis on self-discipline, reason, and personal growth finds a clear echo in the modern self-improvement movement. Popular books and programs on topics like mindfulness, overcoming negative thoughts, and building resilience all draw inspiration from Stoic practices, business, and leadership. Stoicism's focus on virtue ethics and emotional control has found a surprising home in the world of business. Modern leaders are increasingly drawn to Stoic principles like calmness, under pressure, acting with integrity, and prioritizing the greater good. Concepts like Stoic management promote a focus on long-term goals, ethical decision-making, and fostering a positive work environment. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy This widely used form of therapy shares some core principles with Stoicism. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy emphasizes identifying and challenging negative thought patterns, a practice that aligns with Stoic teachings on controlling one's reactions and focusing on what can be influenced. Both approaches aim to equip individuals with tools to navigate difficult situations more effectively. Modern Psychology Positive Psychology, a branch of psychology focused on human flourishing, draws inspiration from Stoic practices like gratitude and focusing on virtue. Both Stoicism and positive psychology encourage cultivating a positive outlook and finding meaning in life's challenges. Everyday applications. Even without formal study, Stoic principles can be found woven into everyday life. Phrases like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger or control what you can control. Let go of what you can. Reflect the core, stoic message of resilience and accepting what's outside our control. The takeaway, stoicism isn't a relic of the past. Its emphasis on reason, virtue, and resilience offers valuable tools for navigating the complexities of modern life, whether it's through self-improvement programs, leadership styles, or simply reframing challenging situations. Stoicism's influence continues to shape how we think and act in the world today. Section 5. The Tug of War. Arguments for and against free will. The debate on free will has raged for centuries with strong arguments on both sides. Here's a breakdown of the key positions for free will, the argument from experience. We all feel a sense of agency in our choices. We deliberate, weigh options, and ultimately decide our course of action. This subjective experience of making conscious choices is a powerful argument for free will, the argument for moral responsibility. If our actions are predetermined, then can we truly be held responsible for them? Praising good deeds and punishing wrongdoings seems pointless if our choices were inevitable. The concept of moral responsibility seems to hinge on the existence of free will. The argument from incompatibilism. This argument suggests that free will and determinism are fundamentally incompatible. If everything is predetermined, then our choices couldn't have been otherwise. However, 
If we can genuinely make a different choice, then determinism can't be true. The argument from randomness. Some argue that if our choices aren't predetermined, then they must be random. However, randomness wouldn't equate to free will. True free will implies a conscious decision-making process, not random chance. Against free will, the argument from determinism. Scientific discoveries suggest a universe governed by cause and effect relationships. Every event, including our thoughts and actions, is a result of prior causes. If this chain of causation extends backwards infinitely, then our choices appear predetermined. The argument from genetics and neuroscience. Advances in these fields show how our genes and brain activity influence our behavior. If our actions are ultimately the product of biological processes, then the idea of free will as a conscious act seems less clear-cut. The argument from incompatibilism flipped. This approach flips the logic of incompatibilism used by free will proponents. It argues that if we truly have free will, then our choices wouldn't be caused by anything, which seems implausible. Our decisions must have some cause, even if it's complex and not fully understood. The takeaway, the debate on free will remains unresolved. Science sheds light on the causal nature of the universe, while our subjective experience screams of agency. Perhaps the answer lies somewhere in between, with a form of free will existing within a larger deterministic framework. The question of free will continues to challenge and fascinate philosophers and scientists alike. Section 6. The Philosophical Fallout. Implications of free will versus determinism. The free will debate isn't just an intellectual exercise. It has significant philosophical implications that ripple outwards, impacting our understanding of ourselves, society, and even the universe. Here's how the two opposing viewpoints influence our thinking. Free will and its implications, moral responsibility and blame. If we have free will, then we're truly responsible for our choices. This forms the basis for our legal systems, where punishments are intended to deter and hold individuals accountable for their actions. Praising good deeds and condemning bad ones also hinges on the assumption of free will, meaning and purpose in life. The ability to make conscious choices contributes to a sense of meaning and purpose in life. We forge our paths, set goals, and strive to make a difference. Without free will, life might feel predetermined and devoid of personal agency, potentially impacting our motivation and sense of purpose. The value of individuality. Free will emphasizes the unique decision-making capabilities of each person. This fosters a sense of individuality and personal responsibility for shaping our own destinies. Determinism and its implications, justice versus punishment. If our actions are predetermined, then the concept of blame becomes questionable. Were criminals simply products of their environment and genetics? Determinism might push for rehabilitation and addressing root causes of crime rather than punishment. Nature versus nurture debate. Determinism suggests our behavior is shaped by a complex interplay of genes, upbringing, and societal factors. This strengthens the role of nurture and environment in shaping individuals, potentially influencing parenting styles, education systems, and social programs, predicting and shaping behavior. If human behavior is predictable, then it could be potentially influenced or even controlled to a certain extent. This raises ethical concerns about free will and manipulation, with potential applications in areas like marketing or social policy. Finding common ground, free will, debate highlights the complexities of human existence. Perhaps the answer lies somewhere in between. 
Determinism might set the broad parameters, but within those boundaries, we might have a degree of free will to make choices and shape our lives. The takeaway, whether we ultimately possess free will or not, understanding the philosophical implications of both viewpoints allows us to engage in more nuanced discussions about morality, justice, and the human condition. It encourages us to reflect on our own agency and responsibility in a world filled with both choice and consequence. The debate on free will in ancient philosophy continues to resonate today. We've explored the perspectives of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and Stoicism, reminding us that this question has been around for centuries. Understanding these ideas allows us to grapple with our own beliefs about free will and determinism. So, what do you think? Do we truly control our choices? Or are we simply acting out a pre-written script? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep this conversation going. Remember to subscribe for more explorations of philosophical topics that shape the way we think about the world.